Hi there, this is a basic paper making process to make your own handmade paper out of recycled paper and um, dried leaves or grass from your yard. And you can use this as the base for making paper out of any kind of recycled materials using plant materials, abaca fiber, and you can add glitter or petals from flowers, leaves, any kind of addition that you want to try that's somewhat flat. You can add to your slurry or add to the finished paper once it's complete and uh, make a creative, unique paper. You can use your handmade paper to make gift tags, handmade envelopes, and the pages in handmade journals. Keep an eye out for future videos where I'll be sharing other crafts using the handmade paper and doing other techniques in handmade paper making. The materials and tools you'll need to complete this process are first, a blender. And I have a blender that I got um, used and use this primarily for fiber arts projects like paper making because I don't have to worry about the motor burning out or having paper gunk in when I try to make a smoothie or something like that. So having something that you can set aside for paper making is really helpful. You can also use your kitchen blender if you're not adding any kind of chemicals to your slurry in your blender. Just make sure that you wash it out thoroughly right after you use it when it's still wet because once it dries and the paper bits all kind of dry up, they get stuck in nooks and crannies and it turns into a somewhat of a cement and then it's really hard to remove. So that's that. I have a bin here of dried leaves. These are just broken down leaves from my yard that I picked up off the ground. You can pick leaves off, um, pick leaves up from the ground when they're fresh and just lay them out to dry until they're really dry and crumply and then we'll process that. You can also use grass clippings and allow those to dry and we'll process that in the blender with some water. This here is some liquid starch. This is really hard to find in the grocery store these days because who uses starch anymore? Who even irons anymore? Um, I got this online and you can find links in the description below for this and all these other materials. Oh, and the liquid starch just helps the the pulp of your slurry to stick together and to create a nice surface for your paper. I have a rubber brayer here for squeezing out the water from your paper, some towels to use. There's lots of water happening, so having towels is really helpful. Um, some used paper, These, this is just regular white printer paper, um, just your basic weight that I have out of my recycle bin. You can start saving papers that you would be otherwise recycling and use these to make your paper. I would suggest using pages that don't have a ton of ink on them because it will alter the color of your finished product, but some ink is totally fine. Um, I have some Arnold Groomer's paper additive and this is uh, an additive that helps it helps the paper pulp not be so acidic. So you can use it for craft projects and um, other, other things without the paper causing photos to yellow or other things to cause to break down faster than they normally would. You want a tablespoon for measuring out the liquid starch. And then probably the most important piece of your paper making is some sort of decal and screen. And this is a system of a grating with a wooden frame and some sort of screening. This is just window screen material. And then this is a really fine mesh material used to squeeze out the excess water. And this actually has really fine holes through it so that you can squeeze out the water. So you'll put the window screening onto your plastic grid and then mount the frame on top and hold those layers firmly together so that the screen is inside that frame. And then you'll dip this into your slurry to create the paper. And then lastly, well, almost lastly, I have some cooch sheets and these are, I've used a bunch of these already, but these are just thick pieces of paper that absorb a lot of water and you press your 
finished paper, your handmade paper onto these or um, put this on top to squeeze out additional water so that it helps your papers dry faster. So having something like this or paper towels, if you have paper towels handy and you don't have cooch sheets handy, that works too. And then a big bin. This is just the big bin that um, my family's had around for a very long time, has a lot of history for us. Um, but this works great for paper making because it's deep enough that we can create a layer of water and paper pulp or slurry as it's called, um, but not so deep that it's hard to dip the decal and screen into. So having something that's deep enough but not too deep is is handy and then of course a towel under that just to make sure that you don't get water everywhere and lastly you'll need something that you can dry your finished sheets on and this is a piece of pegboard that i happen to have sitting around you can use a window screen lay your pieces of paper on a window screen to allow the air to flow underneath as well as on top and that will help them to dry more evenly and more efficiently. This I'll just set on a chair and then put my sheets over top of it to dry. If you like making things, give this video a like because it'll help it spread to other makers and help me to produce more and better videos. For the slurry, you're going to create a two to one ratio of paper to leaves. So if you create two blenders of paper pulp, you'll create one blender of leaves. And I'll show you the proportions of that here. Open up your blender and we're going to start with four pages of paper and you're gonna tear those up into strips. So I have my scratch paper here and I'm just going to tear it up into long strips. And then into little bits and throw them into your blender. And then you'll want to cover these with water and warm water is better because it'll help the paper to soften more quickly. And you want about a quart of water per, per four sheets of paper. And I'm just using regular um, eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. You can use whatever size of paper you have that scrap or brown paper bags or anything like that. And just break it down till you have about a cup and a half of Tear, torn up pieces and then put your lid firmly onto your blender and set this on your blender and you're going to grind this up on a chop setting my blender has different settings yours might not have the specific settings that this one does and that's fine just start low and then build up as the paper begins to break apart and turns into fine little pieces and i have a slurry started here and you can see it's a mixture of paper pulp and leaf bits and it's just kind of a little bit slimy in the broken up pieces of paper so that's what we're going for the consistency of just um, fine sludge. So go ahead and blend that up and get that ready to go and then we'll add that to our current slurry. Okay here's our first blender and this is the consistency that you're going for. Just kind of a soft mixture of the paper bits. So I'll add this to what I already have here and you'll be starting, I did about six blenders full of paper slurry here so four worth of paper and then two worth of the leaves so far and so i'll just add that in by stirring it up and my water is a little bit dirty because the leaves are dirty because i picked them up off the ground so um, that will get drained out as you're working with your paper so it's okay to have a little bit of dirt in there. Okay, for the leaves, we're going to add in about three handfuls or until your blender is about three quarters full. 
And I'm guesstimating on amounts here other than going shooting for a ratio between paper and leaves. So you'll put those in your blender and then pour water over those. And then just like you did with the paper, blend these up until they're little bits. Here's the consistency of these guys. Just kind of a fine freckling of the leaves. So go ahead and pour this into your slurry as well and stir it in. So now I have a ratio of two to one and that is again, two parts paper slurry to one part organic matter slurry. Measurements for the paper are four sheets of paper to one quart of water and three quarters full of leaves to one quart of water. And if you have any little bits like this that are bigger, set those aside because you don't want that messing up your nice paper pieces. So I'm just running my hand through this, checking to see that all the bits are small. The last thing we're going to do to prep our paper slurry is to add the liquid starch. So give your starch a good shake because some sediment goes to the bottom. You're going to want one tablespoon of liquid starch per quart of water that you used or per quart of slurry that you used. So I have about eight quarts, give or take, of the leaf slurry and the paper slurry. So I'm going to add eight tablespoons and that is half a cup. So you can measure it out in tablespoons or in cups. Okay, and lastly, you'll want to add the acid additive or acid um, reducer additive if you want to add that to your paper. Eighth of a teaspoon per quart. So I'll do one teaspoon of this additive. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it in, guesstimate. Okay, so go ahead and stir that all in so you get the starch and the additive evenly distributed into your slurry. And this is a gunky looking slurry because of the dirt and the leaves and the ink on the paper adds the gray color to it. The next stage is to actually do your dipping. So I'm gonna move my bin over to where it's easier to reach and I'm actually gonna lower my table a bit so that I'm not hunched up like this. Especially if you're doing multiple sheets, it's good to have good posture as you're working because you'll end up hurting your shoulders or your back if you're not careful. And I've done both and it's not fun. Okay, and then have a, t a towel laid next to you so that you have somewhere to transfer the paper to right away. Your coot sheets ready to go, your brayer to hand, and that fine mesh piece ready to go. So again, to set up your decal, you're going to have your grid piece with your mesh uh, screening on top and then mount your wood frame on top of that. And I'll put links to these things in the description below so that you can find something like this or the same, same one. Now to dip, you're going to do a down at an angle motion and then level out under the surface of the water and then allow it to settle a little bit and then lift straight up. We want a fine or an even distribution of the paper pulp. So I'm gonna give it a quick stir before I go in for my first dip. And you'll do this each time you go in to do a new sheet. So the angle is at a bit of a 40 degrees to slide under and you want you want to hold the frame tightly against the screen and the grating because if you let go bits of the paper will get between the screen and the frame and then you end up not getting a nice piece of paper so i'm going to go under so that the pulp surrounds where i'm working and then give it a bit of a shake to equalize 
the amount of slurry in one area and then lift straight up and allow the water to slowly drain. So the water is draining like that. And this is going to be a very thick piece of paper. If you want a, a thin piece of paper, add more water so that the slurry is thinner. Okay, and I'll lift off the frame piece and you can dip that in to remove the paper pulp and then set that aside out of your way. And tap off, you can kind of jump it down a little bit to tap out any extra water. And you can see this is a very thick piece and I can go ahead and press this or add water and redip it. I think I'm gonna press it just to see what happens. So lay your fine mesh screen on top and then go for your brayer. And I'm setting it against the side of my bin and I'm going to roll over top to squeeze out excess water in a downward motion. So I'm holding it at an angle and I'm squeezing from the top here and moving down into the bin, allowing the water to roll down the paper. And I'll do that two or three times. This might need more because it's a thick piece of paper. And then you can also flip it over. So I'll hold the paper down and then flip the grating to the other side and then roll from this side. And I'm just trying to squeeze out as much of the excess water as possible because that will mean that the dry time is shorter and there's less that the cooch sheets will need to absorb. Okay, so I have most of the water out here. So I'm gonna flip it back over and remove the fine mesh by moving away the corner and gently lifting it off. Move gently and slowly so you don't tear the fibers of your paper. And then set that screen aside and move to a coot sheet. I'm gonna put a coot sheet on top here and again, flip it set it onto your surface and you can move the screen and your grating aside. And then with a coot sheet, stick them on top of each other. And just like we did before, roll it to absorb any extra water. And you can roll in both directions here like so and gently lift off your coot sheet. And you'll hang these to dry or set these aside to dry and you can reuse your coot sheets over and over again. Okay, so here's our first piece of paper and we'll lay this on our drying rack. So I'll lift that up here like so. So I'll turn this onto my drying rack and peel the coot sheet away. And again, set this aside to dry. And you can even set the cooch seat aside or next to it. Okay, so I have paper pulp on me. Um, so this will take about 24 hours to dry, maybe a little bit longer depending on the thickness. And once you're done, go ahead and press it under some books and I'll show you how to do that once these are dry. But you'll co continue to dip, adding pulp, adding leaves as you go, depending on what consistency you want. You can see here, my ratio was two to one. And so I have lots of little leaf bits and organic matter here. I also had pine needles in that mix, so it adds a little bit extra texture to the surface of the 
of the paper here. I'll show you some examples of dried pieces. So the color overall lightens as it dries. You can see this deeper color, it lightens a little bit. This, the pigmentation or the depth of color is dependent on how much ink was on the pages that you initially used. So it will be different depending on what paper um, uh, to ink ratio you end up with. Uh, so here's some finished pieces. This is that same two to one ratio. And you can see I added some rose petals to this one to add some interest, um, but got a lot of different uh, modelings. This one has a little bit less leaves coming through and more of the pine needles. And then this side shows more leaves. So each side is a little bit different. And here I just wrote out my name is Brittany to show you. This is pencil. You can barely even see it on there. Sharpie shows up pretty well. And then pen, this is harder to see as, as well. But these make great artist pieces for envelopes. These make great pages in handmade journals. You can start to control the thickness of your pages by how thick your slurry is. So adding more water will mean your slurry is a little bit thinner. So you can start to experiment with the thickness of the pages you end up with. This piece that we just dipped is going to be fairly thick, like a heavy cardstock. And this piece is just slightly heavier than a regular piece of printer paper. So you can control the thickness that way. So go ahead and keep dipping paper with your decal in your slurry, adding water as needed to keep that um, surface moving and other slurry as you need to as well. As you run out of slurry, your pages will uh, obviously begin to become thinner as well. A couple things to watch for as you're dipping paper is seeing how thick your pages are. Again, the first one we did was fairly thick, but this one is horrendously thick. So I'm gonna re-dip this. And if you want to re-dip a page, you just flop the slurry back into the water like that and rinse off your screen and then reset your screen with your frame. Your frame, if it gets slurry on it, especially when you have leaf matter and pine needles and stuff like I do, if you have any of those chunks along the side, it will cause gaps against your screen, which means that when you dip your screen into the water, it will cause the screen to bubble out and um, not work. So I'll show you what I mean by holding it loosely and going to do this and then I end up with not an even coating of the slurry. So you can do a quick check looking at the sides to make sure there's nothing shoved in the edges here that you've got clear surface like so and then go in and dip. And again, laying your fine mesh screen over top and rolling over it. If you have big chunks like this is creating a bit of a bubble here, you can go into your paper really gently because you don't want to pull it apart and just kind of see what that is. It looks like it's just a chunk of leaf something. And then replace your screen to squeeze out the water.
If you need to do multiple cooch layers to extract more water, that's totally fine. Just add another layer and press out more water. Then you can go in and add this new sheet to your drying rack. And I'm carefully peeling away the sheet as I work. And the texture of your paper will end up nice and smooth if you use a cooch sheet as the final step because you're rolling into a smooth surface. If you finish by rolling off with the screen, you're gonna end up with a little bit of the indentation of the screen texture. So that's another reason to use a cooch sheet when you're working. And this, just wanna show you, is quite a bit finer than this first piece. We ended up with a little bit less slurry in that mix so it made a nice thinner piece of material so it'll just be used for a different purpose this one the thicker one could probably be great gift tags or an envelope even and the finer one could be a journal page or you could even use it for origami or for like a thick thick origami piece that you could use a larger piece of paper for if you want more fiber and textile art inspiration tutorials and other resources, be sure to sign up for my email list. You can find the link to that in the description below. And I will send you a twice a month update with what's new on Textile Indie YouTube and the website, as well as resources that I find helpful in all of these different fiber arts. And uh, I'd love to have you join the textile community. Once your paper has dried, you'll want to put it on a surface and put a heavy, heavy book on it, like my Survey of Historic Costume textbook, and let it sit for a couple days to flatten the paper. And you can even do this one paper at a time uh, with a book in between. So lay a paper on the table and then put your book on it. And this will just flatten it out so that it's less wrinkled around the edges and so that it's easier to use for whatever you're using it for. Um, and suggestions for using your homemade paper will be as gift tags, punching or cutting gift tags out of them, using them as homemade envelopes or as note paper um, in card making, some sort of paper craft. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can get creative with using your handmade paper. And you can also add color to your paper by adding a little bit of food coloring or a natural dye into your dye water or into your slurry as you're working to make it a color. Thanks so much for watching how to make handmade paper out of scrap paper and dried leaves. I hope you get to try it out. Add any questions to the comments below if you need help and I'd, I'll do my best to answer those. And be sure to check the links in the description below for all the goodies of the uh, materials and the tools and lots of resources from my website and other places. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.